M0FXB, welcome to my channel, Whistler TRX1 or 2, very similar. So we've opened up the software here, you download this by going to this link here on the left, go to TRX install here on the left, and you can download that. So go back to the program. Now I have found that you definitely leave the device turned off. You do have to plug it into your PC laptop and plug it into the unit, but leave it turned off. It will, when it's plugged in, show the time and a few other bits of information. But my experience is, as soon as you turn it on, things go on. Now, when you first connect this, it does try and make you update everything. I would at first say no if you're just learning this. Um, but it's very good the way that you know you can select, check for updates, and it will update everything, including the firmware and DSP and library and PC application. It does it all, but I find that for me, if you do that, try and do everything from the beginning, it, it, it will go into error. So the best thing for you to do is to get yourself from someone, from a friend, if, if you're not happy with what's on the scanner, a CDAT, a CDAT file. I can send you one if you want. Email me and I'll send you one. It's thanks to Sean, by the way. He sent me the one that I'm using now and it's got loads on it. Now, the more you select here, so that when you load on, I'll show you how to load on, you go... Uh, let me have a look now. File, restore configuration from archive, and then you go to that file. I'm pretty sure it's on my downloads. Double click the whole file and the whole zip, and it will bring it in. And it brings in everything. It's not. It doesn't bring in little bits. It brings in the whole lot. So that's that's one way to do it. And then you've got all this. And then tick the things that you want to, you know, to listen to. You know, enable default. I've got airband default at the moment enable what you want to listen to because it's going to take quite a while to boot up when it loads all this on when you want to send that to the radio you've got scanner sd card at the top here it says copy configuration to scanner memory card again you know the memory cards already in the batteries are in the device it's still not turned on but it is connected via the cable that comes with the unit copy configuration it's going to send everything to the unit that's fine Okay, now the next thing is what we call V folders. So you're you're basically creating your own file, your own sort of CDAT file. So how do we do that? The first thing you do is go file, then select where is it? New. Okay, and then suddenly you've got all these new options. They're all empty, these files. So I've got one here called test, yeah. And let's just say you want to start creating one. So click the one that's empty here, like so. It's called CDAT version, and it's basically, look at the number at the end, 003. It makes sense to keep those numbers because they're in order. So click Select. Then I'm in the UK, so I'm going to do UK. You do wherever you are. And then Set Band Plan. So you've now created the, the, the V file. Now, you can't see it at the moment, so go over to conventional frequencies here. So at the top, we were in general settings, which is where we started. You have got all these other features as well. And here, you, in this tab, you can create scan lists. But we're on about a V file, which is the whole lot. Scan list would be an extra scan list. Like if you look at general settings, see the scan list here? It goes down to, I don't know, 200 and something. You would go scan list new scan list type you know dmr nxdn conventional etc but um that's that, that's not what i'm doing at the moment so we're going to cancel that we're doing conventional so we'll go new and in the new section you can start choosing the kind of channels you want so you've got dmr nxdn and analog so we'll just do analog for now and we'll put in my hubnet node 434.550 give it a name, so we'll call it Hubnet, like so, squelch mode, yes, it's got CTCSS and it's 77. Obviously, if it was DMR, you'd do it again, so there you are, let's do it, and you can actually set, if you look here, you can set the backlight, see, backlight mode, on, you can set an LED with a color, so I think it's pretty good, LED mode on solid, Latch LED when activated, yeah, why not? And then look, add a color. Let's do red. I'm not sure what colors actually work, so I'm, I've only had this unit a while. Set, so you've done one already, look. And let's do another one, new, let's try DMR. DMR, 
frequency. My hotspot is 431.550. We're going to call it my hotspot, call it hotspot. Hotspot for now. Color code one and time slot two. And talk group, look, we can even give it a talk group, 91. Okay, it looks like we can skip that if we want and then it will probably receive all of them. So, so actually let's do that, let's just go zero. We'll click OK. And we've done that and again we can set the colors. Click in on the next line. I'm going to go on, on solid, latch, we'll give it a color. Let's go green. Click OK, set. So we sort of created a couple of channels in our, you know, in our new V file, let's call it. Now, let's go back here. So we've done that. So I'm going to go File. And uh, let's have a look now. Set V scanner, copy V, current V scanner to folder. So this is the bit where I'm sort of learning now. We're going to go copy current data to V scanner folder. We're going to go OK. Go to the new one, which we said was going to be three, which seems to have vanished. Let's just get, do that one then. So three is vanished. Click yes, and it sends it. So the next thing I'm going to do is send the whole lot to open vScanner folder. Ah, there it is there. Okay, that's the one we wanted. Select. File, set, import, restore, factory, save, current, configuration, restore. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to send it to my thing, to my radio. So copy configuration to scanner memory. I'm going to click OK for now. And it does say that. I'm just going to select it. I think we'll right click device manager. Go ports. Actually, no, it won't be device manager, it'll be in PC. So go to PC, look, there it is there, F. See that? That's the actual SD card in the scanner. I'm going to click continue. So I'm not sure if I've actually have copied. See that it's, ah, now it's telling me CDAT version 3. So I'm hoping that I can go copy all of the folders and it's going to add that extra CDAT file into my scanner so that if you're watching this and you're more experienced than me I've only I'm only one day into this give me some more tips the other thing I've noticed you've got to be quite patient with reading and writing to this you because we're so used to modern radios even a cheap Bofon will write really faster than this but there's a lot of information to write especially if you're into trunking and all that kind of stuff why get yourself a you know why get yourself a scanner because it's just fun and it receives so many things and the programming of the scanner I think is way more difficult than an amateur radio but I like that because there's more to learn um, but the best way is to get someone friendly like Sean who's going to send you the whole lot complete with everything in it and then you can just go through these scan lists tick the things you do want to hear and there is a, a, a way of, of manual dialing as well Go into the menu on the TR on the whistle. Just click menu, then go to search. Once you select search, then go down to I think it's something like tune mode, and then you can just type the frequency, and it automatically on mine it automatically found DMR as well. So that's all going in while I waffle. So I think that's it for the for today. Thanks for watching my channel. Catch you later. Bye for now.